High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. This is my double movie review of the 2019 films Child's Play and Toy Story 4. I give Child's Play a B. I give Toy Story 4 an A+. Normally, I wouldn't make comparison videos about these two types of films. They're two very different stories made for very different audiences uh, using very different genres, but the movies have the same opening weekend. And because of this, the Child's Play marketing had a bit of a tongue-in-cheek aggressive campaign against the Toy Story film. Every time Toy Story released some type of cute, charming, uh, innocent, promotional poster or package, the Child's Play folks countered with a uh, mean, cruel, evil type of promotional package. So basically, with Child's Play challenging the reigning franchise champion uh, Toy Story, I might as well just go with that idea and do a versus video between them. So this is how this uh, double review will work. First, I will talk about the challenger uh, Child's Play, and I will give a quick synopsis of the plot. I'll say a few things I liked and a few things I didn't like. Then I'll talk about the reigning, defending, undisputed champion Toy Story 4. I'll give a quick synopsis of the plot. I'll say a few things I like. I'll say a few things I didn't like. And then at the end with my verdict, I'll discuss why one film won over the other. And it's not quite as cut and dry as you might initially think considering the legacy of the franchises. So with that in mind, sit back, relax, as I discuss which film about Andy's toys was best. So starting with the Challenger, we have Child's Play, which is a total reboot of the franchise that started way back in 1988. Uh, it's about a doll that becomes uh, dangerous and homicidal. Now in the uh, original franchise, it was a serial killer that used voodoo to possess a doll and thus started going on his murderous rampage, where in this film, it is a robot that is defective and he starts uh, going on a homicide rampage simply because of uh, defects in his programming. So one of the things that I liked about this movie was that there's a character named Fallon who when she initially learns about the problems with Chucky, she clearly says, I just want to note that this is how all Roblox apocalypses start. And I was thinking, yes, yes indeed, these are so dangerous. Thank you, maybe this movie will be smart. Unfortunately, the movie isn't as smart as it should be, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But basically, I just appreciated that line that, hey, this could go south very uh, quickly because it winds up going south very, very quickly. But what I really loved about this movie and pretty much what saves it is uh, the interpretation of Chucky as well as Mark Hamill's performance. Mark Hamill does the voice of Chucky and he's pretty much mastered the craft of voiceovering. But I was concerned that his voice would come off too much like uh, the Joker from the uh, DC animated TV shows and uh, direct home video films. And his voice is wonderful, but he doesn't come off as a Joker, so I really appreciated that. And I also like that Chucky doesn't de really develop a personality, even though it becomes uh, murderous. He is still a robot. He is still a bit defective. He's still trying to learn. He's still trying to figure out the world. Whereas something like Age of Ultron, where you got Ultron cracking jokes and being silly and tongue and cheek and all that kind of stuff. Or, you know, I, I was really happy that it kept this robotic uh, personality, even though it was dangerous homicidal. But on the negative... I mentioned that line about, you know, all these uh, robot apocalypse happen. This movie should not have a third act, okay? Because there were several points when Andy should have known better and destroyed Chucky the doll as swiftly as possible, okay? Chucky kills their cat. Oh, but he doesn't deactivate uh, Chucky or, you know, destroy Chucky. Then Chucky tries to uh, kill one of his friends with a knife. He still... And he still doesn't uh, destroy Chucky. It's only to Chucky actually murders someone and decapitates that victim that uh, Andy and his friends are like, hmm, we should probably do something a little more permanent about Chucky. So he tried to take it out in his arc reactor. Okay, that's just good. And then he tossed it in the bin. Now, granted, they couldn't uh, know that someone would have found the doll and reactivated it, but still, you got some type of murderous, dangerous 
robot in your domicile. You don't keep it around. You destroy it. You don't just take it apart. Go. You crack it. You burn it. You pull it apart. You do everything you possibly can to make sure that thing never works again, which is what they do at the very end. But I was thinking, if you had done that way back when you should have, this movie would have had a third act. So that was something that really frustrated me. Another thing that frustrated me was that there's a uh, victim here named Doreen, and uh, I understand that lots of horror movies have innocent victims, but she is like a super innocent victim. I felt so sorry about that, and I don't know if the way she died just makes a callback to one of the other films in the franchise, but I was just so frustrated by that. On a narrative uh, front, it's fine. On a narrative front, it makes sense, but personally, I don't really like when innocent victims are, you know, brutalized unnecessarily. And this character, she was just one of the few people that I genuinely liked. Whereas another character named Pug, I was hoping and praying and something sinister would happen to him. And nothing sinister happened. It was like, come on, come on, come on. So, yeah, that was that thing frustrated me. So, it, it was still a pretty enjoyable movie. That's why it gets that B. But still, it's like, so many things frustrating. And like I said, if they had just been smart like they should have been way back in the second act, this movie wouldn't have a third act. The third act should not exist. <laughs> and now it's time for the reigning championship franchise's latest installment, Toy Story 4. In this film, the toys that were once belonged to Andy are now uh, acclimating themselves to be Bonnie's toys. And for the most part, things are going pretty well and swimmingly for the majority of the toys as they uh, switch themselves to being part of a new owner. And that new owner, Bonnie, it's time for her to start kindergarten. But when she goes to her, her kindergarten orientation, she's very shy, she's very nervous. So to help herself you know, feel better, she creates this little uh, toy made out of a spork and some discarded items. She names the uh, little toy Forky and takes it back home with him. But to everyone's surprise, Sporky somehow comes to life. And because Sporky is made of trash, he feels compelled to throw himself into trash and discard himself. He feels that his purpose in life has been fulfilled, so he must throw himself away and become trash. But Woody, knowing how important uh, toys are to children, especially at that young age of uh, starting out school, Woody won't allow Forky to uh, destroy himself. So Woody spends the movie protecting Forky and helping Forky and trying to make Forky understand that uh, Forky is now a toy and needs to be loyal and with Bonnie. Now there was a lot of things that I loved about this movie. There were very few things I didn't like about this movie. But I am going to just try to point out the highlights. First of all, uh, Combat Call is a character that was introduced in the Toy Story of Terror television special. I love that character and I was very, very happy that Combat Call had a cameo appearance in this film. It was very funny. And be sure to stick to the very end of the film because there is a wonderful sight gag at the very end of the film that is wonderful. So be sure to stay for the very end of the movie to count that side like that. But yes, I was very happy to see Combat Car. And another thing, this movie made me cry so much and I was just overwhelmed how much I was crying. I was crying at the end, I was crying at parts of the middle, but I was also crying at the beginning, at the beginning scene where Woody is uh, saying goodbye to Bo Peep because Bo Peep has accepted that it's her time to uh, you know become uh, someone else's toy or just move on to the next stage of her existence. And I'm like, why am I tearing up? I know these characters are going to see themselves later in the movie. Why am I tearing up? And then that scene transitions and you hear Randy Newman saying, you got a friend of me. And I was like, like why am I crying so early in this movie? <laughs> so yeah, there were so many times I was tearing up and enjoying. And granted, if you've been following the franchise all the way back when it debuted in 1995, or if you're familiar with the... Uh, you know, movies, if you've seen the uh, specials, or like myself, who actually worked at Walt Disney World, so I got to work with Buzz and Woody and various characters like that. Oh, man, it was just so wonderful and so charming, without being nostalgic. I'm quite sure there's lots of callbacks and sight gags and Easter eggs throughout the movie, but it doesn't feel nostalgic at any point, so that's what I really appreciate. Now, all the negatives, 
again, it's not so much negatives, but I just sort of got to point certain things out. For instance, this franchise has been doing the same <laughs> tropes pretty much always since it debuted. All these movies and all these specials are about some type of lost or discarded or forgotten toy. <laughs> It's like, and it's still a great movie. It's, it's amazing how they they work that trope, but still it's like, it is the same trope, so I just got to point that out. And along with the uh, trope, uh, uh, one trope that works against this film is with Buzz Lightyear. In each movie, there's some type of weird quirkiness with Buzz Lightyear. In the first movie, he didn't realize that he was a toy, he didn't believe he was a toy. In the second movie, he encountered another Buzz Lightyear who also didn't think he was a toy. In the third movie, Buzz Lightyear is getting reprogrammed and also experiences Spanish mode. So in this film, uh, Buzz uses his inner voice, the uh, audio recordings inside himself to uh, help him make decisions throughout the movie. But that doesn't make sense because Buzz is confident. For some reason, in this movie, Buzz is assuring himself. Buzz is lacking confidence. Buzz is not, you know, you know, uh, confident of what to do next. I'm thinking Buzz Lightyear is never unsure of himself. Buzz Lightyear is confidence personified. This makes no sense. This is a betrayal of the character. It doesn't ruin the movie, but it's like Buzz Lightyear is, does not lack confidence. That's the one thing that you can definitely say about Buzz Lightyear. So I was really frustrated that all of a sudden, out of nowhere, after this, what, over 20 year film franchise, Buzz Lightyear is suddenly not confident? <laughs> no, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And finally, the one thing I also got to point out is that Forky, uh, they don't explain how he comes to life. Now, I didn't really expect him to do that. And there's a great line in the movie where uh, the, uh, t uh, the Triceratops says, like, uh, I have a question. Actually, I, I have, like, all the questions. <laughs> and, again, I didn't really expect him to explain it, but at the same time, it's a... 20 plus year franchise and you just throw this giant monkey wrench into the lore of how your toys come to existence and work so you just present this weird case and it's like yeah we don't know how it happened but just go with it <laughs> it's like <laughs> i gotta i gotta you know call you out on that still love the movie but i gotta call you out on putting this weird Monkey Rich this weird universe changing event into your franchises and just like wiping your hands over and say, yeah, 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 just, just go with it. Just go, I got it for you out <laughs> like that. So yeah, the movie is still excellent, awesome, gets that uh, A plus grade, but still it's like, <laughs> a little things, things, as a critic, I got to bring up, I got to point out, hey, I got to. So with Child's Play earning a B and Toy Story 4 earning an A plus, you're probably thinking, well, it's no surprise that Toy Story is the clear winner. But think about it. Toy Story 4 is a fourth film. How many good fourth films are there? Plus, the previous movie, Toy Story 3, wrapped up the trilogy in a nice, wonderful package. It was a beautiful, wonderful ending. And this film is clearly a, just a way to keep the franchise going a little bit longer, just milking that cash cow as much as possible. So you would think that it wouldn't work. Plus, as I mentioned, it has the same tropes with the same characters, even with the same musical composer. This film shouldn't be as good as it is on paper. It should just be like paint by numbers or feel like that way, but it doesn't. It still feel fresh. It still feel wonderful. And if you haven't found the franchise for years like I have, oh my goodness, it's, it, it's just fantastic. It shouldn't be as wonderful, as good as it is. So it's not a case of Toy Story 1, duh, it's Toy Story 1, what? <laughs> and on uh, Child's Play front, while it's not the scariest movie I've seen this year, it's still uh, intense and it's still creepy and it's still spooky and uh, Mark Hamill's performance is wonderful, the interpretation of Chucky is wonderful, and even though the movie doesn't deserve a third act, is still a lot more enjoyable than most of the horror films that I've seen this year, and it's one of the better reboot films that I've seen in a long while. So yeah, it was a pretty good film. It was a pretty solid contender. It got some good hits in and things like that, but the clear victor is definitely Toy Story, and I don't know how those folks at Pixar keep doing this. I mean, even their worst film is still at least decent to watch, so doing this for the fourth um, it's like, how? How? 
It doesn't make any sense, but they keep doing it. <laughs> so yes, uh, Child's Play gave a wonderful fight, but it just couldn't defeat the reigning, defending, undisputed heavyweight champion. <laughs> so once again, Child's Play gets a B, and Toy Story 4 gets an A+. Okay, thank you very much for watching my double review. I greatly appreciate it. Be sure to share whatever comments you like in the comment section. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or just like, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Hero Knight. Thank you for watching, and remember, Andy's coming!